This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Louisville, Colorado. I'm here at Vincent, Romeo, and Rodriguez. Since 1995, they've been providing holistic elder care planning for the Colorado communities. I'm here with partner Thomas Rodriguez. Thanks so much for joining us here today, Thomas. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. You began the professional career in 1999. You joined the team here in 2002. Uh, more recently, um, 2016, 2015, you were basically named top lawyer super lawyer. We've got quite a journey that you've uh, come on here. Let's start back a little bit at the beginning. What is it that got you involved in, in this type of profession? You know, well, in, in the law in general or, you know, helping people. I mean, I, I got very interested in that, um, helping. You know, I was initially a criminal lawyer, worked for the public defender's office for a little while, uh, trying to help people solve their problems was what really interested me. You know, I, I met a lot of people with a lot of d diverse problems and even more diverse in the public defender's office, no less. But, uh, you know, that, that, that's probably the most important thing. And now, you know, through the practice of law and helping the elderly, um, you know, I've been very interested in, in trying to help um, people navigate through these different difficult difficult problems um, my focus is primarily on litigation uh, people come to us they are very stressed while they're dealing with the case they may be dealing with uh, the loss of a loved one or a loved one who may be losing capacity they, they often are dealing with um, maybe a family member who has taken advantage of the situation and started to steal money from the, the persons emotional. right and so helping them through the legal aspects of it, but also the emotional aspects and trying to help them solve the problem, um, you know, in the most efficient and inexpensive and, and productive way possible. Excellent. I mean, I imagine for most of us what matters is protecting what matters most, which is quality of life. Many times we have to understand our legal rights as we go through that maze. Really, this is what uh, the firm is designed for, to help people through that, through that navigation, like you said. Right, it is. And so, you know, we, we do a variety of things here at the firm, um, not just litigation like I focus on. I have two law partners. Um, that do more transactional work, and we do life care planning, which is kind of a, a, a different concept, um, particularly in Colorado, where we help and kind of have a holistic approach to not just solving a single problem the person may have, but looking at the, the big picture, you know, do they have appropriate care in their home? Um, we have caregivers on staff. Basically, right. they say that it, right. it takes a village to raise a child. It does, yeah. um, here, basically, it, it takes a team to protect an individual, really. You've got really a team approach here under one roof. Yeah. Um, it's a program called HELP. Tell me about how that, how that works. Well, and, and so that's the idea. When they first come in, we try to, we try to solve you know, not only the immediate problem they may be facing, we, we look at the entire picture. You know, do they, do they have um, estate planning that needs to be done? Um, are they in the home, you know, and if they're in the home, is there adequate care to provide for them? If it's not, um, you know, then we look a little deeper into the situation and try, you know, to make sure to, to, to give people pieces of the puzzle to try to help them you know, get the support that they need in the home. Maybe they're coming in, they're looking for, you know, an assisted living type scenario. Maybe they need Medicaid planning or something along those lines. Our life care planning um, component of this firm pr tries to look at kind of the big picture and make sure they're addressing all the needs um, instead of just little problems that they may have. So not only lawyers do we have here, but we have elder care coordinators. Yes. That, so you're basically able to tap into multi-resources um, under one roof, which makes it a lot simpler for the client, I would imagine. Absolutely. To have, to have everything here um, under one roof is fantastic. And then, of course, you know, we have a, a, a variety of professionals that we work with and that we're familiar with outside. So even if something's not covered here, we can find that to get our clients to the right person to address that issue. Excellent. Um, not only that, but you've kind of done the footwork for people as well. I mean, it takes a lot of uh, um, cost, time, even frustration going from agency to agency, um, trying to make sure they all coordinate and work together. Um, this, makes it, this makes it more an effective approach, like you said. It does. It does. I mean, I, I think people like coming in and, and just having to deal with everything under one roof instead of having to jump around um, to different places. 
not only if a person comes in, like you say, initially for one, uh, for one aspect, and maybe they don't need special coordinators at that time. Kind of nice knowing you're, you're working with a team that has, has your future set up. Should in the future you need something like that, um, obviously they're there for you. Absolutely. And, you know, as an example of, of what I do more, the, the litigation aspect, whether it's a, you know, a, a contested guardianship or conservatorship, and then we're advising a person who is a guardian maybe for their parent um, and is, is facing some issues, um, we have them come back to us periodically and, and they'll consult you know, with the, one of our care coordinators who will help them address that little problem so they know that, that those services are there and then we can help flag them. They, then they come to us, you know, we're, we're having this kind of a problem. You know, we, have, we know how to route them to the person that can solve their problem, and we do work as a team. Uh, all the attorneys here work together uh, very well. You know, we have uh, uh, myself and then Brooke Brustel, who is uh, also responsible for litigation, like myself. Uh, the transactional side, Rick Romeo, Richard Vincent, um, Sarah Jones, um, you know, excellent attorneys that, that handle more of the transactional estate planning side of things, as well as the life care planning. Um, we have two wonderful paralegals, Diana Cheatham and Lee Teichman, who do a fantastic job. First line of contact that the client gets. Um, so, nice. you know, wonderful receptionist. We also do uh, fiduciary services. Nice. Um, so we'll actually, if someone cannot find someone to take on, you know, whether it's a personal representative, executor appointment, a trustee, um, you know, sometimes a power of attorney, a conservator, um, if they can't agree, our firm will do that for them. And we have um, an excellent fiduciary services person, Bridget Rodriguez, working here. They kind of helps behind the scenes, even though the attorneys will be appointed and will help administer estates. Um, I also do a lot of investigations where there's allegations of, of misuse of funds. And I'll get appointed okay. on kind of in a special role to report to the court and you know to investigate and to dig into the numbers to see if something has been happening that shouldn't have been happening. And then it'll take it from there. But it, it, it fills a need that's very important because otherwise, you know, like with what I was just explaining, you know, parties would have to litigate a lot of those issues and still litigation sometimes ensues from them, but oftentimes um, by doing a thorough report, telling the court, you know, here's what's happened, it will often drive a resolution of it rather than throwing the, the parties into a situation where they might have to spend, you know, tens of thousands or hundred thousand dollars. We all basically, we plan for the future so that we can enjoy our future and also so after we're gone, the folks can enjoy like our families as well. Tell me why it's so important for people to uh, make sure they have estate planning in place. Well, you know, you, you don't want the state making the decision for you. And so if you have no estate planning in place, um, then the intestacy statutes of Colorado will dictate where your estate goes. Um, if you have young children, you know, the, the money, if you don't have something set up for them, for example, the money will go directly to them. You'll have to go to court to get conservatorships, which terminate, you know, at 21, which is perhaps earlier than most people would want their children to inherit large sums of money. Um, the other thing is that, that, you know, having estate planning done with a good, reputable law firm um, gives you the opportunity to express what the, the person, what they want. And sure. then in the event that there's later questions about it, if there's something controversial, if they uh, wanted to disinherit a child for very legitimate reasons, for example, then, you know, that the, the attorney, in the event that there is, you know, will contest litigation, for example, can be a great witness and can say, um, you know, this is why they did what they did. If those things are done in the abstract without lawyers, um, it's a recipe for litigation. And, you know, if, if people might have a handwritten document, which is, you know, arguably, I mean, there's a statute that allows you to do a handwritten document, Will, as long as it's signed and dated. But, you know, I've seen, and from litigating these matters for so long, I've seen people that have tried to kind of take the shortcut, didn't want to spend a little bit of money doing estate planning, and ended up, you know, having an estate. You know, their legacy, unfortunately, instead of, Instead of being clear and, and what they wanted and having it ministered, um, you know, it becomes a legacy of litigation. And, you know, yeah, which is, which is sad. And that I mean, you, you never want to see that happen to anybody. And, and even when we get involved at that stage, our goal is, is to try to resolve the problem for the family and look at the family and try to find a solution um, rather than, than litigating a case to the max. Because um, that's not usually in people's best interest. I mean, sometimes there's very good legal issues that need to be discussed. But in this context, 
I think it's more often that you have family members that have had deep-seated emotional issues either with their parent or with their siblings um, and you know trying not to feed into that frenzy and look at it objectively and get people thinking let's find a way to resolve this short of going to court and spending a week in trial and you know having you at tens of thousands of dollars and your family with tens of thousands of dollars we're not we're not therapy sure. <laughs> so you're basically saying untimely passing premature passing is not something we just experience um, in the media like here recently for the Hollywood elites right. but basically this can happen to anyone um, when is it people should set up their wills trust um, dependable durable power of attorneys, when should that take place? Well, I think the first time it really needs to happen is when um, people have children. And as, as soon as they have children, um, that's when, uh, you know, a, a good triggering effect. You know, if they have minor ch kids, because you want to set up a contingent trust in your will to make sure your kids are provided for, you know, in the event someone happens, that someone you want to control the money for your kids that you leave to your kids, which especially when you're younger may just be life insurance policies and things like that. Yeah. But, but that's usually the part where you'd want to look at the estate planning. But you'd al always want to look at it every so often. Sure. I mean, the things that I've find lead to more litigation later in life is where you have second and third marriages and stepchildren and things like that and then all of a sudden one side of the family feels like they're being um, excluded to the, the detriment of the other and so reviewing your estate planning you know making sure well okay I got married you know for a second time my spouse has you know different children than I have um, how do we provide for this entire family you know, what do we want our wishes to be? So we, again, we don't leave these, this family the legacy of litigation I was talking about before. As we're thinking about the future um, later on as we become elders, um, I imagine it's, it's very beneficial to decide today and now what your basically medical care might be or what it could be. It's a lot better to put in place now what, what you plan. Does that help for people to lay all that out um, while they're in a state of mind where they could do that? Oh, it helps tremendously. And we actually have here at our firm a, what's called a value assessment survey. And we give that out with our estate planning documents. Um, it's a great document because it walks you through end of life scenarios, what you would want to have done. Um, and we encourage um, our clients to, to actually take the time to go through it and most importantly I mean not only are you looking at um, the wishes of that, that you you know if, if you were in that scenario um, would, would want to happen would you want to be kept alive by artificial means but by talking with your family by putting things in place you're taking the pressure off your family so they're not guessing you know what you know mom may have wanted you know, or then, you know, in, in, in more messier situations, if, if wishes aren't clear, you get into a situation where you may have one daughter saying, you know, mom wanted to be kept alive, or one son saying, well, she wouldn't want to be kept alive, and then you have to go to court to solve that. And these are, you know, there's so much emotion as, around dealing just with those issues anyway, without, without having, you know, information about what mom wanted without having, you know, a court case going on at the same time. So, so the more planning that could be done in that regard, the better. As children, obviously, we all read our parents differently, so that can be very uh, confusing. Um, here in Colorado, we have great choices, many options for nursing homes. Um, but basically, I imagine that can be also very overwhelming, so many options. Um, do you have a team here that can help people in choosing a nursing home, as well as how they're going to pay for it, and that type of thing? We do. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up, because I forgot to mention our care coordinators earlier. So Sandy Tobin and Mary Beth Leitzman are our two care coordinators here. Sandy is up here in the the Louisville office and we also have an office in Denver where Mary Beth is um, they have a lot of experience in trying to find nursing homes for people and so as part of the life care piece that's what they're doing a lot of the time they're finding the right fit um, you know their familiarity with nursing homes and and given that they're spread all over the the metro area um, you know they they often help people find you know nice. what's going to be the right option you know will this place take Medicaid at some point which given the cost of long-term care um, is a serious consideration for a lot of people. Some places will take Medicaid, you know, um, you know, after you private pay for a period of time. So being familiar with that maze um, is a huge resource that we have here. Speaking of Medicaid, um, do you feel sometimes the elderly do not even look at Medicaid properly because they're misinformed of how the whole program actually works? 
They are, and yes, and, and the regulations um, are very difficult to keep up with, um, even for lawyers that practice in this area. And I, I'll say, you know, my, my partners, Rick Romeo and Richard Vincent, you know, are experts in that area. Um, I can't even begin to try to keep up because I don't focus on it that much. Sure. But, you know, there's so many misnomers about, um, about Medicaid and Medicaid planning that, that, that I see from the litigation side of things that people often make horrific mistakes thinking that they are protecting themselves from Medicaid. Like, for example, um, they think that they could just transfer all their assets away and therefore, you know, they, they can qualify for Medicaid because there, it's a needs-based program. However, there's a five-year look-back period for transferring assets away where you can disqualify yourself from Medicaid eligibility. And, you know, when transferring assets away, the other things that can happen is you think, well, I want to avoid Medicaid. Or another thing we see, we want to avoid probate, which really isn't that scary in Colorado if done correctly. Um, you know, they'll, tr they'll transfer a deed on a house, for example, to their kids. And then all of a sudden their kids own title to their property. And, you know, they are no longer the title holders to their property. And if they get crosswise with their kids or if their kids get into trouble um, or, you know, have creditors, they can expose their house to all kinds of liability. I've, I've had to litigate, you know, a handful of cases to recover title. And there is a way to do it. Um, you know, called a resulting trust and constructive trust and equitable theories to do that, but um, it's very difficult and, and it takes a lot of work and they're, they're, they're concepts that a lot of courts aren't familiar with. I just had one go up on the Court of Appeals that came back that upheld it. Um, and it was a very sad case where this, this woman transferred all her property, trusted her kids, and then her kids said, well, she, she needed help and her kids basically said, well, we're keeping the property. And so she couldn't afford the cost of long-term care. We had to go through court. We had to go through the Court of Appeals. We've still, you know, now she's in a nursing home. Um, but, you know, people, these, these misperceptions of what Medicaid is and what probate are, um, you know, and people's unwillingness to maybe talk to a lawyer and say, I'd rather, you know, spend for a, an hour of an attorney's time sometimes can lead to a $100,000, you know, litigation case. So penny of prevention versus a, a pound of regret on the back end absolutely so you're basically seeing medicaid and asset protection pretty much go hand in hand there if you've got somebody who who has has done their estate planning they put everything in place as well as they thought they could and yet after they're gone maybe litigation like you say still needs to take place um possibly um maybe somebody was left out of a will or like you said a power of attorney is not doing what they're supposed to be doing um this is something that um you pretty much specialize in right there as well that's correct that's that's about that's about you know 100 percent of my practice i mean I, you know i have gotten into where i, I also um, advise both uh, lay you know regular people um, and professional fiduciaries too when they're administering these estates and navigating these types of issues but um, you know estate litigation is, uh, is is pretty much all i do these days and and i enjoy it i mean it's 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 hard sometimes, and you get to deal with a lot of uh, very emotional and angry people um, and emotional and angry lawyers. Um, I find especially emotional and angry lawyers to be very uh, frustrating because an attorney's job is to be objective and to look, you know, to help the person try to solve the problem without buying into this. And because if you get, if, if you lose that objectivity, I think you lose the ability to properly advise your client because they're already emotional. And, you know, unfortunately, um, I've seen, you know, sometimes where attorneys take advantage of that. And that's, you know, the worst possible thing you can do because, in my mind, as an attorney, because you're supposed to help people solve their problems, not milk them because they're angry about something. And so, you know, at least my own perspective is trying to help people find a solution to the problem as quickly and inexpensively as possible is, is always the best thing to do. I mean, it's not always going to happen. Sometimes issues have to go to trial. You have to have hearings. But, but trying to find um, that solution, you know, as quickly as possible is usually in the best interest of the person, as well as the other parties involved. I've always said a professional is somebody who can keep their passion in check so they can still 
basically use the resources and the knowledge they have to, to help others. Right. Viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is their website. First of all, on the website, you can learn more about the team right there. Uh, basically, this is a firm that began back in 1995, a very holistic approach. Instead of just focusing on the one area that you may need, they are prepared and ready to help you through all the different areas that you need in the future. You can also take a look there on the website, and basically, like you said, they have that uh, a download there um, that you can download the value assessment that'll help you kind of walk you through and see what it is that you may be needing there. Um, once again, let me ask you, if people plan for the future and basically they try to do the right thing um, and it doesn't work out well for them, what would you tell people to do at that time? And they're pretty nervous, maybe something, you know, hit the fan, if you will. Do they, do they call up and set up a consultation? Is that where it begins? They do. They call our office. Um, we also have information on our website where they can send an email, or it, it basically comes through as like an email, um, describing their problem. But typically, you know, they'll call our office, they'll talk to our receptionist, who will try to help them if it's a, if it's a potential life care situation, life care planning situation. We'll get them to one of our care, coordinator, care coordinators right away. Um, if they call about a litigation matter, um, they'll usually get a call where we have to perform a conflict check to make sure we haven't represented some other party which could be adverse. And then we get them um, in touch with, uh, usually it's our, our uh, litigation associate, Brooke Brustel, um, who will do a full intake with them and determine if we can help them. And if we can, you know, we'll all talk about it as a team and we'll set them up for a consultation. And, you know, we do triage work here almost. I mean, we look at it, how urgent is it? You know, do they need something? Um, you know, there's a lot of emergency hearings, you know, if someone's stealing money from their parent and they find out about it, you know, that's a pretty important thing to, to get on right away. So we'll try to get those people in a little bit sooner. If we need to get into court sooner, we, we can usually do that um, under the circumstances. So, so that's, how, that's how the people come in. One of the things you said earlier was um, that triggers um, when you should get started is having children. Uh, I would imagine even more so for somebody with a child with special needs. I know that basically um, Richard specializes in the area of special needs. Um, that can be an overwhelming time. Tell me what you offer for folks there. Absolutely. So for special needs planning, we do a lot of special needs trusts um, where people can, can set up um, you know, under under the, the, the laws of Colorado and the United States, they can set up additional funds that they can have um, available for their children um, who do have special needs, while at the same time not disrupting um, their public benefits. And so, because the public benefits, depending on, you know, the special needs are critically important. And you don't want to disrupt something like Medicaid or, you know, uh, services for the developmentally disabled, for example. But then, you know, you, they could put some money in these special needs trusts, um, which can uh, supplement the needs. And there's certain things that you can spend them on. I mean, certain things that you can't, but, you know, they can make their life, you know, more full while also not disrupting the public benefits. And Richard, Richard Vincent, um, is is an expert in that area and very good and he actually he's in our denver office but he's up here in our lewisville office once a week too so excellent as i as i watch my parents age i see almost a, a feeling of vulnerability and um like you say basically this it's sadly that this is a time when financial abuse um can take place and so um, obviously it's important to have somebody in your corner that like you say can stay out of the passionate and um anger area, if you will, and really take it head front, um, is both offices, are you able to pretty much serve the entire Boulder and Denver area? Oh, yeah. We, we serve the, the entire, you know, front range area, um, you know, as far as from the litigation standpoint, too. I mean, I, I go all over the state, um, you know, and into smaller counties where they may not have um, the expertise, you know, to, to, to deal with these types of issues, or there may not be enough attorneys, because sometimes these cases have multiple parties involved. Um, but no, we serve we serve the entire metro area, absolutely. Excellent. Last time, viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see their contact information right there. You can also take a look at the website. A lot of articles right there on the website. And basically learn more about the team. You're going to see that you have uh, plenty of resources under one roof basically to take care of you. Uh, this basically is the best of, of both worlds. And you've got the personal side as well as the legal side taken care of for you. This is a firm that began back in 1995. That is Vincent, Romeo, and Rodriguez. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and if you don't know, now you know.